Okay, to start off, I'd like to talk about China again. Uh, I brought up China because the legislation we have uh, essentially allows the NSA to monitor citizens who are in contact with foreign terrorists. Um, a lot of our threats are foreign, so we need to know, and as well, uh, a lot of how they get through, how uh, China and other countries get through our firewalls, is because there are people inside the United States who are either giving them back doors or helping them to get through. The NSA is monitoring those, those people and people associated with those people. That's why I brought it up. Um, so, next thing I want to talk about is metadata. Uh, the NSA collects, like I said before, the NSA collects uh, broad <coughs> metadata. What that is, it consists of information that, you would normal, that would normally appear on a customer's phone bill, uh, such as numbers dialed, date, time, duration of calls. It does not acquire the content of anyone's phone calls. This would require another warrant and uh, uh, um, approval through uh, the FISC, the court, the federal court. And I want to talk about how the NSA is limited and legal. Fewer than 24, uh, according to uh, Alexis Simondinger, um, fewer than 24 NSA official, uh, intelligence officials possess the authority to approve queries of the telephone metadata. Only seven of those officials can authorize the dissemination of any U.S. personal information um, to outside of the NSA, such as the FBI or CIA. And uh, of course, this is after determining if the info is relevant to counterterrorism, which would allow them to look at the data in the first place. This means that the NSA must go through numerous uh, protocols that are in place so that there's no abuse going on or uh, overstepping of any boundaries. Um, I have a quote here from K.A. Tapale. Uh, this was written in the Yale Journal of uh, Law and Technology. Every compromise we make to civil liberties in the war on terrorism is, essential, is itself a victory for those who would like to destroy our way of life. Uh, well, like I said before in my initial speech, the government's main priority is to protect its citizens and protect the lives of its citizens. If we have to give up s small amounts of our privacy for that, uh, I believe it's worth it in the end. Last thing I want to talk about is, um, this is from uh, Ian Milhaser. Uh, when someone voluntarily discloses information to a third party, they assume the risk that that information would be divulged to the police. This third party being the telephone company. And this is actually the interpretation of the uh, Smith versus Maryland case, which is a landmark uh, Supreme Court decision that has upheld the NSA's uh, jurisdiction and uh, legality. Last thing I want to talk about, sorry, is um, I don't know if you guys have heard of a man named Hank Asher and Matrix. Essentially, um, two days after 9-11, Hank wrote a program called Matrix. He collected phone bills, utility bills, driver's licenses, uh, travel history, bank records, credit histories, and, uh, and the names of 450 million people. He gave, uh, he gave them all scores of suspiciousness, as we could call. Uh, he narrowed that down to 419. He gave that list to the FBI, and uh, when the FBI reviewed that list, five of the people on that list were under investigation by the FBI, and one was actually the pilot of the second jet that hit the World Trade Center. This is an example of how uh, the system does work and how even private individuals like Frank Asher, uh, Frank Asher can find these people and root them out before, or hopefully before anything would happen. In this case, it was already too late. But uh, another example of how this works uh, in Britain, um, they're proud of their privacy actually, and there's, they actually have loudspeakers on CCT, uh, CCTV cameras um, to uh, call attention to anybody who is potentially breaking the law as well as they're monitoring all the CCTV cameras, and there's not much objection to it there. So it shows that public approval is actually very high for uh, <coughs> surveillance in Britain, at least. Thank you very much.